What's going on, Badger Nation? It's your boy, Mike, over your here boy. at Ad Badger. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm getting very casual. You know, we've been, this is episode, you know, 60 something. You know, I think people could call me their boy at this point. And you're about to go on vacation, <laughs> so you're probably feeling good too. Take a little weekend That's trip. That's right. Right after I finish recording, going, going away. Uh, speaking of my boys, uh, Stephen, I, I hope this is cool, but I wanted to actually give a quick shout out to Jose, James, Lacarena, aliases. Uh, he left a comment on our last podcast uh, or a recent podcast that we did, episode 68, how to raise lifetime value with your market basket report. Basically, had a great idea of how to use the information from the Market Basket Report and put it into a sponsored display campaign. Uh, we didn't mention that on the show, but if you listen to 65, episode 65, that's a really good tip. So thank you, Jose. Really appreciate that. And Stephen, this episode that we are about to get into is going to be a, you know, this, this, we don't want the explicit symbol on our podcast, but I was about to swear. This is a flipping popular topic right now uh, with all of our listeners. Uh, and it is placement bid settings. Now, we've done placement bid settings before, if you remember. But this time it's going to be a little bit different. Yeah, it was a... A little bit cl- cleaner. It, it was a bit of a an eye-opener for a lot of people. I mean, it was it was a big eye-opener for us. We did... We did uh... We did two episodes. The first one was was kind of when uh, when we had Brett. We did that roundtable discussion, where um, it was kind of our first kind of time diving into like what is placement settings, and then like a few weeks later, we did an episode on like okay, how do you calculate um, adjust bids by placement settings? Um, how do you incorporate that to your keyword bids? Uh, since that episode, we've actually realized that we kind of we kind of said something that was not necessarily accurate. So. Over the past like six months that it's been, we we've really been like working on this. Like, how do we incorporate placement bids and keyword bids, and and we finally kind of have a really solid solution that we're really excited to present. Um, yes. Yeah, because we've had a lot of people like since that episode, we've had tons of people writing in asking this question about this problem that we were very well very well aware of. We just didn't quite have an answer, but we finally have one. But it's going to be a two part answer to two episodes. To really break it down because it's it's definitely complex yes the way that i view this episode and the next episode because it's going to be a two-part series uh r- placement bid settings deep dive you know we talked you know the theory of it we touched on some strategy uh, i don't think we did a fantastic job of really walking people through step by step uh, so this episode we're going to talk about how to do placement bid settings for single keyword campaigns Next episode, we're going to talk about how to do placement bid settings for, you know, a standard campaign that has multiple keywords in it. Um, and because we're taking this deep dive, we have a bonus this episode. And we don't normally do this, but uh, I'm, it made perfect sense to do it for this episode and the next. Basically, this episode and the next one will have a free opt-in for all listeners uh, it's going to be a Google Sheet where you can actually follow along and type in your numbers and actually get placement bid calculations based off of that. Uh, and you can get that at adbadger.com slash placements, P-L-A-C-E-M-E-N-T-S. <clears throat> oh boy, adbadger.com slash placements. And that is where you can get the bid calculator, bid calculator that we're actually going to be talking about through this. Right, we're, so, we're going to be using the spreadsheet during this current recording um so yes. we're gonna give you a, a cleaner version of it but but you'll have exactly what we got right now exactly uh we're also going to touch on uh, how ad badger handles placement bids and just bid settings in general um so without further ado let's actually jump in to the meat of this episode how to actually start optimizing bids for those single keyword campaigns starting with an introduction <laughs> Alrighty, Stephen. Single keyword campaigns. You know, this is a topic we talked about in episode 49. Uh, and for anyone who missed it, highly recommend you go back and check it out. Um, but you know, what are some of these quick reasons to have single keyword campaigns? Uh, yeah. So two. I was gonna say there's just one reason, but I guess there's two reasons. I guess there's, yeah. I guess there are actually now that I'm thinking about it, there are a few reasons why you want to have it. Mm-hmm. The number one yes. is. Um, that adjust bids by placement 
meaning where your ad appears on Amazon, you can adjust your bids accordingly. That is a campaign level setting. Um, so every keyword is going to perform differently with each different ad placement, depending on what keyword it is. So um, so that gives you control over the individual keyword placement settings in a way by, by only having one keyword per campaign. Um, other reasons are like, you know, maybe there's a keyword that's especially important and you are willing to target, say, like 100% ACoS on that one keyword, but you can't do that for all of your campaigns because, you know, so so different ACoS, you may have a different budget allocation for this one keyword. So those are kind of the top three reasons why you may want to do this. But we're mainly talking about placement yeah. settings right now. Exactly. So it gives you that ultra focus on a single keyword. So, uh, you know, in episode 49, one of the recommendations was, you know, taking some of those hero keywords and putting those into their own single keyword campaign, uh, an SKC, as you might say, an SK. Uh, and really what putting a keyword in that single keyword campaign, uh, one, it gives you like the mental focus of like, this is such a power, a hero keyword for me. I'm going to give it exactly what it needs. I want it to grow and, and give it everything that it needs. And one of those things is customized bid placement settings for it. Um, so really the only way to do that is to put it in a SK campaign. So for those that, and, and part of the reason why this is part one of a two part series on placement bid settings is because even if you do not have campaigns that are single keyword campaigns, you need to listen to this episode because it's going to highlight the cut the actual practice of top of search rest of search product page bid settings um and that is an essential concept before you go into optimizing it for multi keywords so that is part of the reason why um that we're starting with single keyword campaigns hit those concepts it's easiest to optimize placement settings there and you know, part of me wants to sort of call back to top of search product page placement settings uh, in the notes of this episode. In case you're completely lost and you're wondering, you know, what does top of search mean? What does rest of search mean? What does product page mean uh, when it comes to bid placement settings? Um, we're going to send you back some other podcast episodes and it'll be in the notes of this episode so whether you're watching on youtube or you are watching on our blog or you are in your podcast app of choice all those old episodes on placement settings will be there in case you're completely lost and you don't even know what a placement setting is that will be helpful to you for everyone else we're going to dig deep into actually how to set single keyword placement settings let's jump in all right, so the problem that we are currently facing with placement data is that you open up a campaign, you open up the placement tabs, you see that there's top of search, product pages, rest of search, um, placement data. So, you know, your ads appearing in those three different places. Those three different ad locations are getting clicks, conversions, they're driving spend, they're driving sales, they have different conversion rates, different click through rates, and, you know, ultimately different ACOS. Um, how extreme can these can these get? Huge you know, top of search versus rest of search. Huge. Yeah. We're talking. You know, you might see top of search have like a twenty percent ACOS, and product pages or rest of search is like over hundred percent. It can be pretty extreme at times. <clears throat> now, the problem that we're facing there is that um, you, when you're looking at the placement data, and you're, you're seeing the top of search. Like you don't know which keywords in that campaign are getting top of search, which keywords are ending up on rest of search. We can assume, you know, you might assume, okay, let's just assume all keywords are getting an even spread um, and they're all getting like, you know, like a third of the, or yeah, they're getting a third of their placements at top or a third, whatever. So, so you can, you can do that, but that raises another question. Now you look at the keywords and you're looking at a certain keyword and this one keyword, let's just say it's got a 20% ACoS and it's looking really nice. You don't know because that one keyword, like the data on that is the sum of all of that keyword's placements. So that keyword sometimes won an ad placement at top, sometimes it won an ad placement on product pages, and sometimes it won an ad placement in the rest of search. So that one keyword is, is winning um, you know, ad placements at all these different locations. And so when you're calculating the bid for that, you don't exactly know where were the ad placements for that keyword. And when you're looking at the placement data for the campaign, you don't know which keywords were getting those ad placements. So you might find that in this campaign, 
you say, wow, top of search converted 100% better than rest of search. So we should increase our bids by 100% for top of search because you have that option. But what if the only keywords in that campaign winning the top of search were your own branded keywords in that campaign? Um, so that's one reason why you, you might want to separate your branded keywords from your you know generic keywords at a campaign level. But now if you if you did go through and increase top of search for that, uh, uh, yeah, you increase your bid for top of search by 100%, that's going to impact all keywords in the campaign and not all of them will have the same performance at top of search. So when you come back next week, you realize, wow, my top of search bids or ACoS is now over 100%. Like what happened? So um, yeah, that's that's the, the problem that we're facing. And anything you want to add to that, Mike, or uh, maybe recap it? Yeah, I, I mean, you highlighted some of the difficulty with trying to do placement bid settings, uh, with trying to adjust placement bid modifiers in a multi keyword campaign because you simply cannot you don't know what keywords are tribu- contributed to the ACOSs of top of search rest of search or product pages and it makes it really really difficult to actually confidently do it but we're going to talk about that in part two uh, of our series here so for part one here because you cannot adjust bids by placement at an individual keyword level in a multi-keyword campaign. You have to put it in a single keyword campaign if you want to 1,000%, like it to, to definitively know that your bids are perfectly adjusted for top of search, rest of search, product pages. You need to do it in a single keyword campaign. It's the only way to do it uh, and incorporate these placement pages, um, these placements. So for those hero keywords, it probably does make sense to go through this process and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today so that is sort of the setup you can't set your placement bids at an individual keyword level so the only way to really fine-tune your placement bid settings is to put a put the keyword in a single keyword campaign now of course you might be saying well you know could i do this with every single keyword in my account in a completely separate campaign that you know, uh, I don't, I, I'm not really recommending that because that would be way too much work. Uh, it'd be very overwhelming to optimize everything. Uh, in addition, probably not every keyword gets enough meaningful data to put it in a single keyword campaign. So this really is a strategy to take, you know, that hero keyword and really give it the placement bid modifiers that it needs, that it deserves. Uh, and that's where we're at. We're at here. Uh, and again, it sets us up for how to really understand placement bid modifiers, and we're actually going to walk through that in a bit. So, uh, Stephen, I feel like we're hitting the, hitting this point hard on a theoretical level about why it needs to get done, why it's easier to do in a single keyword campaign, uh, some of the tr- the troubles with a multi keyword campaign and placement bids, how it's hard to tell what's actually contributing to the placement bid, all these good things. Uh, before we go into the spreadsheet, is there anything else that perhaps we should mention to users uh, just to sort of set us up for success as we actually start manipulating this data. So just to recap that, um, yeah, like you can't all, like we're we're essentially presenting you two solutions to this problem. Um, You're going to want to use them both. One solution is the single keyword campaigns. And then the other solution that's next week is how do you do this for multi keyword campaigns? Because if you have a keyword that gets, you know, 10 clicks a month, um, you know, it's an exact match keyword. It gets about 10 clicks a month. You want that to be in your, in your, you know, uh, your, yeah, I mean, yeah, you want that to be in your campaigns because you're getting uh, revenue from that. But if those 10 clicks are divided over top of search, product pages, rest of search, and there's three clicks of data on each of those, like that's going to be very low data to like, be like, oh, wow, top of search converts like 300% better than, you know, pr- rest of search, you know? And it's just low data, so it's not going to be, um, yeah, it's just not going to be reliable. So you will need to uh, basically play this. You, you you will want to basically group keywords, combine data um, when data tends to be scarce. And you will want to find the average performance and adjust those bids and placement settings accordingly. Um, so that is what next week's episode will be about. But for this week, yeah, Mike, let's jump into that spreadsheet. So again... Uh, if you are not in a car 
<laughs> so don't pull this up while you are driving. Um, but you can go to adbadger.com slash placements and get a copy of the spreadsheet. Uh, and really the way that this spreadsheet is designed, be sure to first go to file, make a copy so you can get your own copy of this. So file, make a copy. It's a Google sheet. Uh, a lot of people sometimes request edit access to this document. Don't do that. This is the document that we'll all be copying from. So go ahead and file, make a copy so it becomes yours. And the way that this placement bid calculator is designed is there's going to be some areas that you fill in those are labeled, and then there's gonna be some areas that you don't fill in, that, that we're doing the calculations for you. So really the things that you're going to be entering are going to be data on top of search, data on product pages, data on rest of search. Uh, and we are assuming that this is the single keyword campaign version of the calculator. Uh, we will have another version of the calculator for next week's episode. Uh, for multi-keyword campaigns. So that's the setup. There's going to be, you want to do file, make a copy. There's going to be some information that you fill in. And what, and that's, that, that's it. You know, if we're going to explain how it actually behaves, but the calculator does it all for you. So you're just going to go and enter your clicks, your orders, your CPC, your revenue, your spend, a couple other metrics, and it will spit out your placement bid modifiers and your new keyword bid for your single keyword campaign. That's it. We made it easy for you. Uh, so that's adbadger.com slash placements. Now, Stephen, uh, you know, let's actually walk through how it works. And there's two different scenarios that are worth mentioning is how the calculator works if rest of search is worst, like the worst performing, like it has the highest day cost, and then what to do if product pages is the worst. So rest of search being the worst is probably going to be the most common so let's actually walk through a little bit of that right here so after you enter your clicks your orders your cpcs all that good stuff we will then calculate a target bid for each placement uh, and where does this target bid come from so when we're talking about target bids um we we did we've talked a lot about bidding, how to bid mathematically, scientifically. Um, And again, it's almost like, you know, I I mean, I stand by everything we've talked about. Like we've talked about, we, I mean, we did a whole episode. It was like the seven personalities of the, of the seven personas of the Amazon bidder or something like that. Um, We talked about that. Really what you should be doing is revenue per click times targeted cost percentage. Um, Go back, listen to that episode. If that doesn't sound familiar to you, um, but the problem is, let's say you're looking at a single keyword campaign, you're looking at top of search, product pages, rest of search, and let's just say you're you're running you're running that bid calculation. Like if you could bid individual bids for those different things, like um, you know, maybe just for the sake of analogy, let's just say you have one campaign that only goes to top like there like there is no product pages rest of search. Like Amazon creates some custom campaign for you where you only go for top of search, and then you have another campaign that's only product pages, another campaign that's only rest of search. So if that was a thing where you had three different campaign styles, um, it would be pretty easy. You would just say, okay, well, for this campaign, I'm going to set the bid to this much for the keyword because that's what the data is reflecting. And for this, yeah, and then you just do that for all three campaigns. Problem is, um, that doesn't happen. Your keywords are appearing in all three places. And in this example that we have, um, you figure out that your, uh, where did the, oh, shoot. I think we lost our our original total mic before we before we did the uh, the waiting here, but um, <clears throat> so let's just say your 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 average cost per click is like a dollar. It's it's about a dollar for this like uh, campaign, um, and then you realize that when you're looking at what your cost per click should be from top of search, product pages, rest of search, you realize that top of search is actually worth a dollar sixteen because it converts better. It's a, it's a better performer. Um, is that what the target cost per click should be, Mike? Is that 84 cents? Yeah. So in this case, for this campaign, we're realizing, okay, this single keyword, uh, we should be bidding 84 cents because, you know, given the data on the keyword, you know, that's, you know, what the keyword's worth on average. But the problem is we realize top of search is worth $1.16. Um, product pages is actually worth uh, $1.39 in this case. And rest of search is worth only 39 cents because rest of search is performing horribly. 
So in this case, product pages actually performs the best. Top of search performs really, really well. So yeah, like at the end of the day, you know, our, our cost per click should be about 84 cents, but you don't want to bid 84 cents because then you're way overspending on rest of search. Rest of search is only worth 39. Right. So what's the solution? Yeah, I mean, the actual keyword, you know, if you're just looking at the keyword tab, the keyword tab is going to say 54% ACoS. And you could set a new bid on that and it would be 84 cents, you know, because that would be, you know, revenue per click multiplied by target ACoS type thing. However, your ACoS on top of search is 39% and your product page ACoS is 32 and then your rest of search ACoS is 115%. So it wouldn't make sense to give an 84 cent bid across the board to every single placement. So what we need to do is actually lower our keyword bid and then we're going to be increasing it, the product page, and we're going to be increasing the top of search. And the reason is because in this situation, rest of search is behaving the worst. Uh, it has the highest ACoS. It has the lowest revenue per click. So that's where if we could bid just for rest of search, we would bid 39 cents. If we could bid for uh, product page, we would bid $1.39. And if we could bid on top of search, we'd bid $1.16 because that's what the data is telling us. It's converting better when it's on top of search. It's converting way worse when it's on rest of search. So high bid for top of search, low bid for rest of search. So then we get into, well, let's just set some bid modifiers. And then you get into the situation that you cannot set a bid modifier for rest of search. So this is where it introduces the concept of because rest of search is the worst and then top of search and product page bid modifiers are going to increase from there, we need to set our normal keyword bid to our rest of search and then our rest of search bid will inherit that and then we apply bid modifier, bid increasers for top of search product pages to get them where they get to. So in this example, rest of search deserves a 39 cent bid. So that's exactly what we did. And the way that we got that is just by taking you know, revenue per click, multiplying it by the target A cost, boom, we get 39 cents. So and we just got that from looking at the rest of search data. So that's that. So we enter a 39 cent as the new keyword bid, and that becomes the rest of search bid. Perfect so far. So now we have a low bid as our keyword. That's going to get inherited as a low bid on rest of search. But we don't want a 39 cent bid for top of search and product pages. Those are converting quite well. So what we do there is we need to figure out how much we need to increase 39 cents in order to get to our top of search target bid and get to our product page target bid. Can I? So interject yeah, just a, a quick reminder the reason why we're if, if it sounds like a really convoluted roundabout way um just as a, a reminder you can only increase bids amazon will only give you an option to increase your bids for top of search and product pages you cannot increase for rest of search and you cannot decrease for any of them so that's kind of why yes. we're, we're, we have to do this roundabout way where we basically set a low keyword bid to force a decrease for rest of search and then we can apply yeah. an increase um, Amazon will let you increase anywhere from one percent to nine hundred percent for those for those other placement yeah. settings. Right. In a in a perfect world, I would have just set it to you know calculate the keyword bid and then calculate like a decrease for here and an increase for over there. But unfortunately, you can't do that. Uh, so because you cannot change your rest of search bid modifier and because you can only increase top of search product page, what generally ends up happening is that you end up lowering your keyword bid which then becomes your rest of search bid, and then you end up increasing it. So basically where we were was, you know, in this example, 39 cent is the keyword bid, that becomes a rest of search bid, and we calculated the rest of search bid by, you know, revenue per click multiplied by the target A cost for rest of search. And then we needed to figure out, okay, if we calculated a top of search target bid to be 116, you know, what percentage increase do I need to increase it from 39 cents in order to get it to $1.16? So you do that math, it ends up becoming 196.3% increase. You know, so if I were to increase 39 cents, 196.3% increase, I will get to $1.16, which is exactly what my top of search bid was. 
it should be. And then my product page bid, I need to get that all the way up to 139. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase that to 255%. So that will, will increase me from 39 cents to $1.39 and I'll get to where I want to get to. So then what I've just set up, when rest of search is the worst performer, I have just set it so that I have a low keyword bid, 39 cents. That becomes my rest of search. Then I'm going to apply a top of search increase and a product page increase and I calculated that by how far my target bid should be from that low rest of search bid. Basically the base bid. And that, the base, sure, <laughs> yes. The worst performing bid. Um, because in this case, and most popularly rest of search will be the, will be the worst. So I think, I wanted to pause there because <laughs> a lot of times we've talked fast on the show. Um, but I just wanted to pause there and just sort of let that sink in what to do when you open up those placement settings and rest of search is the worst performer in a single keyword campaign, that's what you do. So feel free to rewind, you know, two, three minutes back just to recap that. But um, and I, I think that's it. Yeah. I think that's it with when rest of search is the worst performer. And if it seems like a lot of math and really complicated, well, that's why we made this calculator for you guys. So <laughs> take advantage of it. Yes. Um, and you can see the formulas in it. Yeah. So like you'll be able to actually click on the cells and see where the things are being calculated. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll have little descriptions on there too. Um, but yeah, that is that is our single keyword campaign if rest of search is the worst performer. And one question we did not answer previously is what to do if product pages are the worst performer. You know, you can't you can't decrease. You know, you can't apply a negative bid change. Uh, n or and you can't increase from rest of search because rest of search you can't increase it so you're sort of caught between this weird spot so what do we do when product pages is the worst yeah. let, let me let me say one thing to contribute to the problem here so in in our second kind of uh, example that we have on our on the spreadsheet in front of us um, so in the previous example we said hey product pages you know the, the cost per click, like it should be $1.39. That's how much it's worth because it's driving a lot of sales. Rest of search, 39 cents. In the second example, we say, okay, well, if product pages was worth 23 cents and rest of search was worth 78 cents, we can't do the same solution as before where we where we like say, okay, well, let's just set the keyword bid to 23 cents because what that's going to do is that's going to take us out of the race for a lot of rest of search placements where the bid was worth 78. So that's yep. the problem um, you know that people have, have been writing in, asking us, um, like what do you do in that situation? Cause you don't want to kick yourself out of rest of search. You want to keep driving sales there, but you also don't want to set a 78 cent bid and drive up your spend on product pages and spend more than you need right. to. So that, so that is the, the problem. So sorry to interject. No, that's perfect. So you're absolutely right. So in a situation where we, you know, we run through our placement settings and we calculate that top of search is the highest product pages is the lowest and then rest of search is in the middle. And basically what you need to do is you need to do a trade-off. And it is not ideal, however, because Amazon does not let you do the things that we just described. It doesn't let you set a negative bid adjustment. It doesn't let you set a modifier for rest of search. Because of that, what you want to do is actually look at product pages and rest of search together. And basically you get the revenue per click for their combined metrics so you take their combined metrics because you cannot split them out you cannot bid lower on product pages and then um, you know higher on rest of search using bid modifiers you cannot do that uh, using the same situation we just described when rest of search is the worst so when rest of search is in the middle and product pages is the worst this is where you have to actually combine their data and the, when you combine their data, basically what you're saying is that it, it's almost like a weighted average in the sense of, you know, it's just the average of these two things. It's the, it's the revenue per click for both of them together. So basically what you do is if you take the combined revenue per click for product pages and rest of search, you will end up with a bid that is between both of them. So in this example, the product page target bid was 23 cents and the rest of search target bid was 78. But if you take both product page and rest of search, their revenue, and you take both their 
clicks, you will end up with a bid of 63 cents. So that 63 is the trade-off between the 78 cents you want to bid for a rest of search and the 23 cents you want to bid for product pages. And the reason why that's a safe trade-off is because that's weighted. Uh, in this situation, uh, it had way more sales for rest of search, so it's closer to the rest of search bid. Uh, if we were to flip it and have a lot more sales for product pages, that would be a different situation. But in this case, because rest of search is actually in the middle, product pages is worse, the bid will be a little closer to the rest of search, but it won't be so high that we're getting punished for every product page bid. And that is where you come up with the rest of search modifier, which is always going to be blank because you cannot set one. But instead of setting an aggressive bid at like 78 cents, by taking the revenue per click and the clicks for both of them, you end up with a 63 cent bid for rest of search and product pages. So it's going to be more than what you want for product pages, but it's going to be less than what you want for rest of search. That is the trade off that you have to make when product pages is the worst performer. And let me contribute to that. Um, the reason why, like, you know, basically using the sum of both of their revenues and both of their clicks. Um, the reason why that's really effective is because, like, because one of the things that, that one of the one person was writing in, he was like, hey, product pages is the worst, but I don't want to kill my rest of search traffic. Um, and, like, he sent me a screenshot and he had, like, and so, like, let's just say he, he had the same, he, he has the same target cost per click that we've got here, 23 cents for product page, 78 for rest of search. So he sends me the screenshot of his data and he's like, what do I do? I don't want to nuke my, my rest of search sales. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, yeah, sure. The product page is performing horribly, but you have like 10 clicks or there and like one sale, but you have like hundreds and hundreds of clicks on rest of search and like thousands of sales, like rest of search is like, like don't nuke your bid to 23 cents. Be, to to mm -hmm. to stop overspending on product pages like rest of search is driving it so like at that point you could pretty much ignore product pages and if you take the sum of their sales and the sum of their clicks together the data is obviously going to heavily reflect what's going on in rest of search versus if product pages say product pages was driving the majority of spend and clicks and all that stuff um so in this case you know if 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 the way we ran the data um product pages worth 23 cents rest of search worth 78 if and we said the keyword bid should be about 63 cents. If the majority of the clicks and, and spend and everything was coming from product pages, that keyword bid would get closer and closer to the lower 23 cent mark as that picks up more of mm -hmm. um, the overall data. So that's really exactly. the power of this. And I'm gonna say one more thing here. In the, in the kind of made up data that we have, um, in this case, product pages for this keyword was getting 194% ACoS, which is way too high. Um, rest of search is getting a 57% ACoS, which is higher than our desired target of 30, 30%. So let me tell you what happens mm -hmm. when we, when we type in this, uh, this keyword. So if we set the keyword bid to, to 63 cents, um, product pages, ACoS would drop from 194, we drop from 194 to 81%. So still not at 30, but like, Hey, we're, we, we're cutting a lot of the wasted spend there. So that's good. Mm -hmm. And rest of search would drop from 57% to... 24%. So we would, so rest of search would be a little under our target ACoS because obviously we're bidding a little bit less than our target cost per click. And product pages, we're definitely pulling the ACoS down significantly, um, but it's still a little bit high. Um, but it's still a little bit higher than it should be. However, in this case, rest of search is driving most of the traffic. So we, we'd rather get more of the sales um, at that ACoS. Uh, and we'd be okay with product pages getting a little bit of a higher ACoS because we don't want to, to you know, lose our rest of search sales. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So I hope that it sense. is a trade-off. <laughs> yes, B basically, we're going to get closer to where we want to as a whole, while Amazon just simply doesn't give you the capabilities to set a, you know, a negative bid modifier. It doesn't give you the ability to set a rest of search bid modifier. So you're stuck in this hard spot where you do need to make a trade off. And what what this does, it minimizes the amount of trading off that you need to make. Uh, it lowers you, your bids such that you end up getting more conversions closer to your target ACoS. And that's ultimately what people are after. 
Um, so even people that are, you know, that have very high aggressive target ACOS is because they're trying to fuel just the sales or in a product launch or organic ranking, whatever it might be, there's still a target ACOS in there somewhere. And, you know, maybe it's not 30%, maybe it's not 20, maybe it's 50, 60, 70, whatever it might be to amplify that. You still want to be close there. You still want to be bidding to get to where you want to get to. You don't just want to be uh, crazy with your bids. So you still want it somewhere you know, you still want some number that you're aiming for. So with all that said, that is how that works. So you take the revenue and the clicks to get your keyword bid for both of them. And again, our calculator does all this for you. You don't need to do this yourself. You just need to input a few numbers. We spit it out for you. Um, so then you get your placement bid, your rest of search bid, and then you get your top of search bid mod modifier. Because then, similar to before, you're just calculating how far do I need to increase my top of search to get it where I want to get to based off the low bid that I'm giving it. So in this case, we gave it a 63 cent click, uh, 63 cent bid. We wanted to give top of search $1.16. So then we would just calculate what percent do I need to increase 63 cents to get to 116. Well, that would be 83% bid increase. So that is it in a nutshell. Um, you know, what to do if your rest of search is worse. That's probably the most common. And then we also have on this calculator what to do if product pages is the worst performer. We will on the calculator have a section for what to do if your top of search is the worst, but it's the same, exact same concept as what we just did with if product pages is worth worse, except you just flip it. I flip it. Um, you take the top of search. Yeah, you would combine top of search data with the rest of search data and throw your increase uh, bid multiplier on product pages instead of top of search. So, yeah, just flip it. But I'm also going to say if top of search very rarely performs the worst, and if it is performing your worst performer, there's probably something wrong with like your product listing because, um, or like, or your keyword selection is bad and you're overspending on bad keywords or your product listing is messed up. So like people who are clicking at the top, they're seeing so much better options that like they're just not buying. So so you're probably having another issue there rather than uh, your placement settings. Yes, exactly. Um, so Stephen, I think, we've, I think we've laid out a really strong groundwork for next week's episode. You know, this episode, we, re we got more detail than we ever have on placement bid settings. And I think listeners will really, really, really like this episode because I think, uh, you know, going back and listening to our old episodes on placement bids, you know, the first one was only theoretical. We didn't really do any math. The second one, we did some math, but I don't think we went in as detailed as uh, we would have liked. Uh, we have links to both of those uh, in our show notes, but this is our most in-depth tour of placement bids. And it's going to be a two-part. This was just single keyword campaigns. Next week is multi-keyword campaigns, uh, which is going to be, you know, you're going to be in for one. But hopefully by then, people have already seen the calculator. So that's, they're all already going to be ahead of the curve. You know, one question I wanted to just answer too, because uh, I know that we have a lot of customers that listen to this podcast. Uh, how does Ad Badger handle placement bid modifiers right now? Uh, so what I can say is that we are currently we're, we're going to the way that it's going to look is we're, we're basically going to be applying a lot of this math and a lot of this theory into our biz by badger algorithm uh, and the way that we're really going to do it is um, essentially like have a checkbox like would you like ad badger to handle placement bids as well you check that box and ad badger will do a lot of these placement bid settings that we just described here uh, and i'm really excited about that um, and we'll have updates as we get closer to that release. But um, that's placement bids in a nutshell for single keyword campaigns. Um, be sure to get the calculator at adbadger.com slash placements. Steven, any other final closing thoughts? You wanna close this out here? Sure. Um, I mean, you guys can see that it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely an intricate kind of topic. Um, it's taken us a lot of brain power just to kind of come up with these solutions, especially, uh, I mean, the, the single keyword solution was, was kind of easy, but the multi multi keyword campaign incorporating it was, was definitely a bit, a bit tougher. And we actually just came up with a solution last week, um, which we're pretty excited about. So um, yeah, we'll be talking about that next week. And 
Um, hopefully we did a good job explaining that and we didn't, you know, ramble or, or, uh, say things that made sense to us, but make no sense when we say them out loud. So we'll find out in the feedback, I guess. But yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. And I hope that this was super valuable and helpful to you. As always, you can find all of our podcasts and show notes at adbadger.com slash podcast. And we will see you guys next time in the Badger Den. Oh, oh, oh.